All right, lovely. So let's see. I have your gold delta sky miles here. Definitely see you haven't been using the card. Now, would you potentially want to keep it because you've been able to use the benefits, or was there something you actually did like about the card? Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Abroaders Travel Podcast, your weekly meetup with thousands of entrepreneurs, hustlers, creators, nomads, ninjas, wanderers, and world changers, all seeking to build the skills and connections to live a life without borders. If you want to learn more about what we do or download our entire podcast archive, check out the website, abroaders.com. Happy Wednesday morning, and welcome to the 43rd episode of the Abroaders Podcast. I'm Eric my partner, AJ, is somewhere in Bangkok, Thailand. Haven't heard from him for a little while, so I decided to do this one solo. We want to help you guys get as close as possible to make your redemptions with miles be completely free. It's not always 100% possible. Airlines add fees for booking over the phone, for booking less than 21 days in advance. They add charges for fuel, and there's always your taxes and security fees and things like that. But today's episode, we're going to talk about all the steps you can take to reduce the out-of-pocket cost and also how to negotiate with those banks to make sure that you're managing the credit cards that you have, the accounts that you've got open in a way that protects your credit and minimizes your long-term costs of hustling this game and minimizes your long-term costs. Show notes are going to be at abroaders.com slash cheap. All right, guys, so I just arrived in Hong Kong, and this is my first time in China. I uh, never have actually been to mainland China, got close enough to uh, China and Vietnam to pick up a cell signal from there, but this is my first time behind the curtain, and uh, I have to say I'm really glad that I've got my VPN set up because all my Google stuff doesn't work, and uh, it's actually pretty pretty startling to to realize how much uh, the government here is able to cut off from the Internet. So definitely an interesting experience there. And as many of you probably know, Hong Kong is in the midst of some pretty serious protests in relation to the election. The Chinese government wants to have more influence and have a committee that can veto election candidates here in Hong Kong. And the people are standing up and crying foul. So I haven't actually seen a whole lot of action on that front, but it's an interesting time to be here, and I'm glad to have the location independence to check out this world-class city. So before we jump into the saving on travel, I wanted to update you guys on that first-class Cathay Pacific trip that I booked with U.S. Airways Dividend Miles. I flew 15 hours from Chicago to Hong Kong before catching a short flight onwards, a couple hour flight onwards to Bangkok, and definitely a really cool experience. But I think that the key takeaway for me was that the difference between business and economy is way, way bigger than the difference between first and business class. I mean, don't get me wrong, Cathay Pacific was incredible. It was luxurious. There was a giant suite. I had more space than I knew what to do with. They were serving Johnny Walker Blue Label and, you know, good food. But the bottom line is it's probably not worth the miles, at least for me, outside of just having a pretty cool, unique experience. I'm really glad I got to try it out. And in fact, I've got a couple more flights. My flight to Tokyo today is on first class again in Cathay Pacific, about a six-hour flight, and then flying home from Tokyo in December on Japan Airlines. So I'm really excited to have a little bit more perspective there and check out Japan Airlines product as well. But all of that said, I don't think I'd probably pay for first class, even in terms of miles, even when I'm just paying 137 bucks for the ticket. I think it's probably better, especially with most programs, to save those miles and say, you know, fly more business class. It's just a little bit too much for me. I don't need somebody serving blue label and buy with a hot towel every two minutes, you know, possibly a bit much. Anyways, uh, the one big highlight of my outbound trip from Chicago was that I was able to negotiate my way into Cathay Pacific's famous first class lounge at Hong Kong Airport, the Wing. It is a truly over-the-top experience, and I wasn't actually entitled to get in because my flight to Hong Kong was in first class, but my ongoing flight was in economy. And so what I did is I hung on to that first-class ticket stub from my flight from Chicago to Hong Kong. You know, usually the ticket that determines whether you can get into the lounge is the one onward. 
And so what I did is I went up to the Cafe Pacific desk and asked them and basically told the agent there that the people had told me in Chicago that I could go to the lounge, but that I needed to ask in Hong Kong. And so I just kind of put that extra pressure on her to sort of tell me no and just, you know, let her know that they had told me it was possible, but it just wasn't something that they could print the invitation for me all the way back in Chicago. And, you know, she took a little bit of time. She ended up calling her supervisor and the food in that lounge was like a five-star meal. So I was able to, to get a great meal in, get some work done and chill out waiting for my flight for Bangkok. And it wouldn't have been possible if I hadn't stopped by the Cafe Pacific desk and asked for that invitation because my boarding pass itself was not going to get me in. Next update that I have for you guys, AJ and I had a really high quality experience at Dynamite Circle BKK. If you're an entrepreneur and you have your own business and you haven't checked it out yet, I do highly recommend that you look into joining up with the Dynamite Circle. They pulled off a top-notch event and one of the keynote speakers at this event, Peter Shankman, proposed a really, really cool idea. He has set the ambitious goal of sending 100 people home for the holidays using frequent flyer miles. And so AJ and I have volunteered to do the bookings for Peter, and we'd love your help. Peter is a best-selling author, a business consultant, and a speaker, and advises a host of different companies. And he obviously has, is very, very successful and proposed the idea this past year of trying to help people. And obviously with all those gigs, he flies a lot. And he also is going for status. Uh, he's a United Loyalist at the moment. And so he doesn't like necessarily using frequent flyer miles for travel because he wants to keep that status, which means you got to buy those tickets. And uh, so he ends up accumulating a whole bunch of extra frequent flyer miles. And so Peter had the idea last year of helping some people who maybe don't have quite as many financial resources get home for the holidays by donating his frequent flyer miles. And I think they were able to last year send about 10 people home with Peter's miles, and it ended up getting quite a bit of press. Um, I know that at least United and maybe some other airlines as well donated some miles, and Peter was able to have an even bigger impact. This year, he's setting the ambitious goal of getting 100 people home for the holidays, and AJ and I have volunteered to do those flight bookings free of charge, get as many people home to be with their families over Christmas as possible. So we'd love your help with this. If you've got booking experience and you'd like to help out on that end, we would love to hear from you. Shoot us a message to support at abroaders.com. Also, if you've got extra frequent flyer miles that you don't need to get where you need to go, please consider donating them to this cause. It's going to mean the difference to getting somebody home to be with their family this year. And so if you've got extra miles to spare, please let us know and we will put you in touch with Peter and get those into somebody's hands who can book a ticket to get somebody home. All right, guys, now it's time to talk about lowering the cost of travel hacking. There are a few general principles that you want to keep in mind. The first and the probably the simplest way to really prevent yourself some very, very ongoing and frustrating pain is to choose programs where you're accumulating points that don't pass on fuel surcharges. This is absolutely huge. There are plenty of airlines out there that are charging massive fuel surcharges. We're talking $500 to $1,000 on top of your free ticket just for the cost of fuel. Fuel surcharges don't have anything to do with the cost of fuel. They're just a way for airlines to manipulate their ticket prices and change all the fares in a given bucket without having to do as much work and without having to be as transparent about it. So, bottom line here, you want to avoid fuel surcharges by picking programs that even if the airline has them, they're not going to make you pay. Those programs are U.S. Airways, American Airlines, United, and Avianca Talca. And with just one exception in that American and U.S. Airways do pass on fuel surcharges for their partner, British Airways. But other than that, you're going to be in the clear. The second option here, and this is an important distinction, is you can also redeem on airlines that don't have fuel surcharges to pass through. So the final line of defense is the program. If the program that you've accumulated miles in doesn't pass on fuel surcharges, it doesn't matter if the airline charges them because they're just not going to end up being charged to you. You're going to, the program that you're redeeming with is going to eat those fees for you. 
But if you have another currency that does charge fuel surcharges, let's take, for example, you're using Aeroplan miles. If you've got Air Canada's Aeroplan miles, they do pass on fuel surcharges. But that doesn't mean that you're stuck paying them because if you redeem on an airline that doesn't charge them in the first place, there's nothing to pass on. So if you do end up having currencies like Aeroplan that are going to pass on those fuel surcharges, you got to be more careful about which airlines you choose. So instead of flying on Air France, you want to fly on Delta. Instead of flying on Asiana, you want to fly on EVA Airlines. So that's how it works. You're just, you're just looking to pick the airlines that have the smallest fuel surcharges and minimize those costs. The next way that you can lower the cost of all of your travel hacking is by getting a credit card that you can use to refund fees that you do end up paying. Those can include the fuel surcharges we just talked about, but they can also be things that are pretty much impossible to avoid, like taxes, airport use charges, 9-11 security fees, and so on. So the best card for this is the Barclays Arrival card. It's basically like a cashback card that you can use towards travel. So it's not quite cashback in the sense that you can't just get cashback for anything, but you can request a statement credit for any costs that are related to travel. And this is really, really handy. The other nice thing about it, it earns two points per dollar spent, and you also get a 10% rebate on miles redeemed, which means that the 40,000 point sign up bonus is actually worth $440 off of your travel expenses. So use those to wipe out those fuel surcharges, taxes, fees, and security charges. Okay. The next thing that you want to do is you want to always try and pick cards that waive the annual fee for the first year. The next part here, and we've talked quite a bit about this in recent weeks, is you always want to ask airlines to waive any fees possible. So a lot of times airlines charge a phone booking fee. And so if you have to call and book your ticket over the phone, you can tell them that it's not possible to book that award on the website. If it was, you should use the website. If it were possible, you'd be using the website and avoiding the $35 phone fee. Now, it doesn't always work, but in my experience, lots of agents will do that courtesy if you ask nicely and you've been friendly. So always treat the person like you'd want to be treated and ask them kindly at the end of the phone call if they can waive that phone fee because it wasn't possible to book on the website. As we talked about last episode, anytime the airlines make a change without your permission, you have the right to make a change without paying their fee. So if you didn't check out last week's episode, run it back. You're going to see exactly how I handle a phone call with one of the agents from United and get her to waive that $75 change fee because of a 20-minute schedule change. And so just keep that in mind. That's another great way to reduce the cost of booking that travel is if the airlines decide to change anything about the scheduling that you're booked on, you have the right to change the ticket without paying a fee. Last part of this is we're going to talk about credit card fees because most of these cards that you get you these awesome bonuses do have annual fees. The first thing that you can do is pick cards that waive the annual fee for the first year. And that's most of them. In a few cases, you're going to end up paying the annual fee. Coming to mind right now is the U.S. Airways Dividend Miles MasterCard from Barclays. They do not waive the $89 annual fee. I think the 40,000 U.S. Airways points are worth it, but if you're trying to reduce costs, pick cards that don't have an annual fee. Now, the next thing is that even though that annual fee is waived for the first year, it can come back to bite you in 12 months. And if you are really maximizing your travel hacking and credit card applications, you may have as many as 10 or 15 cards after a full year. And so when it comes around for those annual fees to start, you got to make sure you keep track of them and you got to make sure that you know how to negotiate. So here's a breakdown of what you need to know about getting those annual fees waived or getting something else in return from your bank that makes it worth keeping the card. The fundamental concept here to keep in mind is that the credit cards are concerned about their cost of acquiring you as a customer. It's way more expensive for them to acquire a new customer than it is to retain or hang on to an existing customer. And that means that they're willing to shell out some extra miles or shell out a statement credit that's going to prevent you from having to pay that annual fee so that they can avoid having to go get a new customer to replace you. So 
First thing you want to do is always call when your annual fee is about to come due. And in most cases, you actually don't have to, to call them in advance of the annual fee posting. If you call within a few weeks after the fee shows up on your statement, if you decide to cancel the account, you can get that fee removed. But the key thing here is that we're not going to cancel the account. We're going to get the fee waived or we're going to get something better. The first thing that you need to do is declare your intention to cancel the card. This is critical because the frontline agents, the first person that answers the phone, doesn't have the same type of leeway or ability or discretion to give you something in return for keeping your account open. And if you say you're going to cancel, by most of the bank's rules and processes, they're going to transfer you to a special department designed to retain customers. And the agent that picks up the phone over there is going to be highly incentivized to keep you on board. The next thing that you need to know is, and you want to do this in advance of making the call, is you want to know what your price is. What is the minimum amount of compensation that you want to keep that card? Is it a full credit or a full waiver of the annual fee? Maybe half, or maybe you should know, or if not money, maybe the minimum number of bonus points that you would accept in order to keep the card open. And the big thing to keep in mind here is some of these cards do have other benefits. So, for example, I'm thinking about the American Airlines Platinum Select card. That card gives me a 10% rebate on the first 100,000 American Airlines miles I redeem each year. And so that in itself is super valuable. And I probably wouldn't cancel the card. I would probably pay the $95 fee just to keep that mileage rebate. The bank doesn't need to know that. So anyways, before you make the call, decide what you need to keep your account open. The next thing, obviously, make sure you get transferred. And then when you're talking to the retention agent, ask for an offer and wait. All right. So I want to play you guys enough talk about this. I want to play for you guys three different retention discussions that I had with Citibank, American Express, and Chase. Each of them went a little bit differently, and what I was offered and what I had to do to get it was a little bit different in each case. Now, I'm going to start with the Citibank one. This was by far the easiest, and it was really clear to me that the agent that I was talking to was probably pretty new at her job. She sounded a little bit nervous, so I think this is a nice one to start out with. But there's a couple of things that I want you guys to keep in mind here. There's a few different options that you start when you make this call. You've got the option to get a statement credit. You've got an option to get bonus miles, which we call a retention bonus. Or you have an option to maybe get offered bonus miles with a catch, which I like to think of as a retention challenge. It's more like a mini sign-up bonus where you've got a, a spending requirement. And then, obviously, the last option is you can downgrade. So the key thing here is that at the very beginning of the call, I asked to be transferred to the retention department by telling them that I'm gonna cancel the card. She confirms actually very specifically that I do intend to cancel the card and then transfers me over to somebody else who ends up making me an offer I can't refuse. Have a listen. Is there any sort of, uh, in the past they, there's a, they've passed me over to another department. Sometimes they're, they're able to, to mm -hmm. take a look at it and uh, offer something. I, I know I've had that happen a, a couple of times with other cards mm -hmm. in the past. Okay. Only are you advising me that if I can't remove the fee, so that you wanted to close the account? Yeah, correct. Okay. Just bear with me just one moment, and I can get you over to a representative that can assist you. Would you mind holding? No, no problem. Thank you so much, Kim. Sir, thank you so much for patiently holding. I do have an excellent representative by the name of Michelle on the line, and she's going to further assist you from here. You both have a great day. Thank you so much. You too. Hi, Mr. Pellick. How are you? I'm good. Uh, it's Paquette, but you can call me Eric. It's fine. Project. Okay, thanks, Eric. Uh, my name is Michelle. I'm an account specialist here at City in South Dakota. Um, I do want to let you know that we do greatly appreciate you calling, giving us a call today about your concerns about the annual membership fee. I may be able to go ahead and assist you and alleviate that um, that concern today if you would just hear me out here. I mean, sure. you are earning <laughs> one um, American Airline mile for every dollar spent on your eligible purchases, as well as um, you get your first egg check for free for you and up to four traveling companions. Some restrictions, exclusions, and conditions may apply. Mm -hmm. um, I am able to um, provide you with a $95 statement credit, Eric. Okay. 
um, by Fine. taking this offer today, which will build to the account within, uh, will post to the account within two billing cycles or sooner. And as well, and as well um, additional 1,000 Advantage miles after spending $1,000 in eligible purchases each billing cycle for the next 16 billing cycles. Okay. Now with this, um, you have no obligation that you have to spend $1,000 in eligible purchases each billing cycle for the next 16. Go gotcha. Ahead. So, so it's optional. If but if I do, I get a bonus thousand points. As long as you hit a thousand um, in any of those sixteen billing cycles, mm -hmm. you would receive a thousand dollars, a thousand um, bonus advantage miles on top <laughs> yeah. of the ones you're originally earning. <laughs> I'll, I'll take the thousand dollars. That would be just fine. <laughs> Yes, each billing cycle, as long as it's each billing cycle for those 16. If you decide not to um, use your card for eligible purchases, you know, two billing cycles in a row, that's perfectly fine. You wouldn't be penalized or anything. So. Okay, so like if I miss two months, I'd still have an opportunity the next month. It basically starts today and, and goes for 16 months? It will take about two billing, um, two business days for the offer to get applied to the account. Okay. Um, so the 10th, and okay. you would be able to start making those eligible purchases. Okay. Yeah, that sounds great. Um, and you say, okay. and you did say that you'd be able to waive the the ninety five dollar fee. Um, let me re um, re clarify. It's not a waiver. It's a statement credit. Okay. The statement credit will apply to the account within um, two billing cycles. We just ask from you is to um, at least pay the minimum payment due stated on your billing statement, even if that amount includes the annual membership fee. Mm -hmm. And then you would. Um, you would receive a statement cr credit in the amount of $95, which happens to be the same amount of the annual membership fee, but... Fair enough. Um, Duly noted. That's that's fine. Thank you. Yeah, let me go ahead and, and apply this to the account. I do have some important information to disclose with you. If you have any questions at any time, Eric, just let me know, okay? Yep, sounds good. Okay, so that one went pretty well. I was able to get the statement credit that's going to waive my $95 annual fee for that card. And I was also able to get a bonus challenge, which means that I could earn an extra six or 16,000 miles, which made it possible for me to earn a thousand bonus miles for each of the next 16 billing cycles. Now that's not really my favorite type of retention bonus because it's a little bit trickier than just spending a bulk of money and being able to forget about it. But I did get the annual fee waived, and again, this was my Platinum Select Advantage Visa, which I had no intention of canceling because, again, this card has great benefits, free check bags, and a 10% rebate on Redeem Miles. So I spent 10 minutes. Uh, the recording is a little bit shorter than that, but that was how long the card took with all, that was how long the call took with all the verifications, and and ended up coming away with a great offer. This next call is with American Express, and I'm calling about my Delta Gold Sky Miles card. This was one of the first travel hacking cards that I ever signed up for. I believe I got a measly 30,000 points, which back at that time in 2008 was a pretty good sign-up bonus, and I've been paying that annual fee or getting it waived every year since. Now, a couple of things to listen for in this call you might note that I kind of cover a few of the benefits that I like about the card. I ask her to waive the fee, and she says she can't do it. And so I go through another part of the process, which is really important. I, I want to clarify that I can transfer my Amex points to airline partners, even if I close this card. Now, in this case, the big concept here is that you want to make sure that closing the account, if it does come to that, isn't going to jeopardize the points you've already earned. So that's a really critical thing that I talked with her about. In the case where it's a co-branded card, usually they transfer your points directly to your account with the airline. So the ones that you have to worry about are like the bank points. So Chase Ultimate Rewards, Amex Membership Rewards, those are the ones you have to worry about. If you close the card, it's possible that you're going to lose the points. So in those cases, you got to transfer all your points out to one of the partners before you close. But in this case, she confirmed that my Sky Miles were safe, and I continue through and end up taking on another option, which we haven't talked about yet, and that is downgrading to a no-fee card. So if you're not able to get some sort of bonus, the last, the last line of defense against having to close your account, which remember, you don't want to close those open accounts because especially an old account like this, I had this card since 2008, 
This is anchoring my average account age, which keeps my credit score strong. So I want to do anything I can to keep that card open, but it's probably not worth $100 to protect my credit score just a little bit. So this is a great outcome for me. I end up getting the card converted and don't have to pay an annual fee ever again on it. And I can continue to keep that account open indefinitely into the future to protect that credit score. Have a listen. All right, lovely. So let's see, I have your gold, belts, and scammels here. Definitely see you haven't been using the card. Now, would you potentially want to keep it because you've been able to use the benefits, or was there something you actually did like about the card? Yeah, I mean, I do, I do like the, the free check bag. can be nice. Um, okay. So, you know, I, would, I guess I would keep the card uh, on that account. But, you know, to be honest, I mean, I'm, I can earn miles that are a lot more flexible with uh, the blue card and, and transfer them to Delta if I want to go that route. So... Um, you know, I would be looking at, I guess one of my ideal scenarios would be to just, uh, if this card could be converted into a, a no annual fee card, you know, it'd be fine to keep it open. Um, but otherwise, you know, yeah, it just doesn't make sense to pay the fee on this one. I'd, I'd rather close it out. Um, uh, I would, you know, if like you have the discretion to, to waive the fee or, or, uh, award some extra sky miles as a bonus to keep it open, that I definitely would consider that as well. Okay, yeah, we'll look into any opportunities we have here. I do want to let you know on the blue card, you're not able to transfer uh, miles to Delta. You can purchase travel on our website with your points, uh, whether it be through Delta or any of the airlines we partner with, but you're not able to actually transfer those to Delta. So it is a limitation on the card. Um, I don't have I do have, let me, let me have you clarify that just to, to make sure, because I actually asked that sp exact question to someone when I, uh, when I converted my SPG to the blue card. Um, I have another couple of accounts open, uh, business accounts that, that are linked to membership rewards. I believe it's linked to the same membership rewards account. Um, so my understanding from the, the conversation I had when I, when I converted that card to blue was that I would be able to transfer to partners, uh, because of my business platinum card that, that's open that, that allows. Oh, is that through true? Through the business platinum card. Absolutely. Yes. A hundred percent. I, okay. and I, I just realized that you had that attached, right? But through the blue card, was that that was the only card you had, you wouldn't be able to. So I just wanted to make sure I advised you of that. But yeah, you're no, sorry. I appreciate you're, that. You're, you're the chief. Okay, so as Absolutely. long as the business card stays open, though, I can earn miles with the, the blue card that, that go into my big pool of And of you can use it with Delta. Delta. Absolutely. Okay, perfect. Okay, yeah. Now, Mr. Burkett, on the gold Delta card, unfortunately, I don't have any opportunities to place any other um, additional credits or uh, miles. So at this point, would you prefer to just go ahead and close out the account? Yeah, I mean, unless there's another card that it could be converted to, I don't know, um, I know, maybe the everyday or I don't know what products you guys have available. Is there any option to, to convert the account to, to something else? That wouldn't you know, unfortunately, to? there's not. I mean, we could move it into a card with a lower fee with Delta, but the, the lowest fee card we have is the $55 fee. So you still have a fee there, um, but that one doesn't even give you the free check back. So if that's something you like, you know, for $40 in savings, I wouldn't really... Yeah, no, that wouldn't make sense. Okay, yeah, I think... That route. Uh, I think um, I'll go ahead and close it then. So, and, no, and unfortunately, there's not a different card that we can convert it into. Unless, let's see, I think there might be a Hilton card. Do you ever stay with Hilton properties? Uh, yeah, actually, occasionally. Really? Okay, let me see. I think Hilton might be an option. You know what? Yes, it is. Perfect. Yeah, we can definitely move you into the Hilton Honors card if you like. That has zero annual fee, and you earn points with Hilton, and we would be able to keep your same account number. And, of course, we'd refund that $95 to the account as well. Yeah, that sounds great. Okay, great. Let's go ahead and do that. Do you happen to have a Hilton Honors partner number? Yeah, I do. One second. So we'll get both of you new cards with the same account number, zero annual fee. Uh, your rates and other fees will remain the same. Uh, foreign transaction fee is still 2.7% of each okay. transaction after conversion to US dollars. Um, these cards you should receive in about 7 to 10 days along with a change in terms by mail. So okay. you can still use your Delta cards in the meantime if you like. And what I was also mentioning, too, is with any of your Sky Miles, we don't take those away from you, so you can still uh, use those through Delta directly. Okay. And right, so any miles that have already been earned and sent to the Sky Miles program are, are safe in my, my Delta account. You got it. Yep. Yeah, those are safe. You're going to keep those. And then, of course, after we switch into Hilton, you'll just start seeing your Hilton balance increase. Okay, and, great. And do I have your final approval to move the Delta card into the Hilton Honors card? Yes, you do. All right, great, sir. Well, glad to still have you on this account. And um, as I mentioned, you should have that in the next 7 to 10 days, and you can still use your Delta card in the meantime. You can definitely disregard your bill for this month. 
Uh, anything else I can help you with today? Okay, okay yeah, we're all set. All right, so the last one I want to play for you guys is a call with the Chase Business Department. And this one's a little bit amusing because the guy is clearly much more experienced than, say, for example, the Citibank agent who pretty much offered me everything she was able to offer right away. This guy plays it a little bit more coy. And, you know, you can kind of hear me struggling to get him to take me to the retention department. And at some point, he just kind of says, like, no, I can cancel your card for you. So in this case, he called my bluff. Um, fortunately, he did offer to give me some bonus points, which was well worth keeping the card open. It's a business card that we put a lot of spend on, and we get a lot of ultimate rewards points, which I value very highly. So in this case, going into the call, I knew that I was going to value 10,000 ultimate rewards points at about $0.02 cents a piece, which means that I got $200 in value as long as I can make that spending requirement. It took me about five minutes to make the call and was able to come away feeling good, a good reason to keep the card open. Spent $95 on the annual fee, but was able to earn those extra bonus points. Chase Business Card Services, this is Jason in San Antonio. Can you get your first and last name, please? Hey, Jason, this is Eric Paquette. Thank you for that. What can I do for you? I'm calling to uh, ask about my annual fee. I saw uh, the fee hit my statement, and I'm kind of just going through my, my cards and, and trying to eliminate a couple um, and so I wanted to see if you guys could do anything about the annual fee. Um, if not, I guess I'd, I'd like to cancel my account today. Okay, we can take a look at that. Can you verify the business name on the card? Yeah, of course. Uh, it's Green Growth Solutions. And then your mother's maiden name or password. And I have access to the account here. Now, I can try and waive the annual membership fee, but typically we can't really do anything about those. Let's see here. Yeah, I wasn't able to waive it. Let me see if I can find any other information here. Okay, and it looks like there's an offer on the card if you were to close it today. Um, if you spend 5000 in three months, you would get 10,000 points. Okay. 5000 in three months for 10,000 extra points. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I was hoping to get the, the fee waived, so you don't have any, any options for doing that? No, it looks like that's the only offer I show on the account. Okay. Uh, if if I were to decline the offer, is there a process for, for somebody else to talk to me? Um, would would you transfer me to, to another department to, to close the account? Well, no, I can handle closing the account for you. Okay. All right. Well, I just wanted – I've had it happen in the past where, you know, somebody checked for me and they they didn't have anything that they had access to, but the procedure was to, to move uh, the call to, to someone else who was in, you know, a department designed for closing accounts, I guess, and, and the other person had an offer that the first person didn't have. So I just wanted to see if that was part of the process for, for this uh, particular card. Okay, I'm not seeing anything like that on your account, unfortunately. I'm sorry about that. No, it's no big deal. I mean, I, I just, um, you know, I, I thought that might be a possibility with, I think we've put a pretty pretty significant amount of spend on, on the card over the last year or so. Okay, so the, the offer is, is 10,000 10, points um, with a 5,000 spend? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, do you have any, like, discretion to be able to award some courtesy points as well? Um, like just like a customer service goodwill that you could maybe increase that just a little bit for me? Uh, unfortunately, I don't only have a way to just add points to the account like that. I'm surprised by that. I've had stuff go wrong with my account before, and, and every, every time I've, I've ever asked that, the, the frontline rep did have at least a couple thousand points in, in their discretion. I mean, I'm allowed to use points to correct mistakes or issues, but not as far as not like as a just... Retention thing. Okay. Yeah, not not to just give points like that. Okay. All right. Uh, well, I guess I will take the uh, the offer. If if I end up deciding to to cancel the account uh, at a future date, can I still get a prorated or or refund of the fee? What's can, what's my timeline for that? As far as the fee, if you were to close the account within sixty days of the fee being applied, it would automatically be refunded back to the account. Okay. We've got five thousand in three months uh, to get ten thousand bonus points. Is that correct? Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Let's let's do that. Okay. All right. Was there anything else that I could do for you on the account? No, nothing else on the account. Let me let me just get your uh, your name and info, just so I can put something in my records for the call. My name is Jason. Jason. All right. Do you have a, an ID number or anything, Jason? 
No, we don't have any kind of ID numbers or anything. Okay. Um, how about where, where you're located? San Antonio. Okay. Awesome. That'll work. All right. Thanks a lot. Okay. Um, so does the spend start immediately? Um, any any spend from, from today forward will count towards that? It actually starts the following Monday. So next Monday is when it'll start. Okay. All right. Good to know. Thanks a lot. Okay. Anything else I can do for you? No. Have a have a great night. Thank you. Uh, thank you for calling, Chase. You have a good night. You too. Bye bye. All right, guys. That's all the time we have for the show. I hope you guys found that informative, and I hope that you're able to use the strategies that you heard today on the show to save yourself some serious cash and stretch your points even further. We'll be back next week, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. This week's International Jam reflects my continued streak of jamming out to electronic house music. This one is from a Lithuanian DJ, best known for this single. His name is Mario Banasov, or also known as Ten Walls. This track is Walking Elephants. Thanks for listening, guys. We will be back 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'll be joining you next week, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard, from Tokyo, Japan, the biggest city in the world. Travel safe. Site and join our email list for exclusive travel hacking content. If you like what we're up to, the best way you can support the show is by leaving us a five-star review on iTunes. Lastly, we would love to hear from you, so send your show feedback to Eric or AJ at Abroaders.com. We will see you next week.